He wouldn't allow her. I don't, I mean, stop and think about it. Aren't you glad today? Amen. That Jesus forgives sins and He forgives sinners. Yeah. And the Bible said He looked at Simon and He said, Simon, I have somewhat to say. Yeah. And that unto thee. He said there was a man, a creditor, who had two debtors. It said one owed 500 pence and the other owed fence of 50 and said neither one had money to pay and said the creditor, he just forgave them both. He said, tell me, Simon, which one do you think, uh, amen, I love the most and was the most thankful? Uh, and Simon said, well, I suppose he that was forgiven the most. Uh, Jesus said, you have rightly answered. Uh, this woman, uh, amen, uh, came in and her sins oh and said Simon when I came into your house I said you gave me no kiss amen but this woman hath not ceased to kiss my feet Simon whenever I came into your house you gave me no oil to anoint my feet and said this woman hath anointed my feet with oil Simon when I came into your house you did not wash my feet but this woman has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair and I say unto you though her sins are many they are forgiven her never a man spake like this man who forgives sins oh today do you know him? I remember I remember whenever I was a teenager I'm talking even preteen, 10, 12 years old and begin to learn that I needed to be saved begin to learn what sin was all about begin to learn that I was lost and in my sins. And I learned that if I didn't come to Jesus, and I learned that if I didn't get saved, as Karen said, and as it's already been spoke here, then I would die. And in hell, I would lift my eyes. Oh, fear came into my heart. Amen. And, but I remember, I remember that there was a man one time, I was 15 years old, he was a preacher. He was a good man as far as I know. I believe he was trying to do the right thing, but in the wrong way. Okay? You see today, I have no ability to save. Amen. I have no ability to speak to your heart or to tell you when you're uh, lost. I have no ability, amen, today within me to lay my hands upon you and to declare you saved. But this preacher, he uh, came to me. He said, Dewey, do you want to be saved? I said, yeah, I want to be saved. He said, well, kneel down right here and pray this prayer with me. And everybody in the room, everybody in the room was watching me. You know what I felt? Peer pressure. Yeah. I didn't feel the Spirit of God. No, I felt the peer pressure. And I heard that man speaking to me, telling me to come kneel down right here. So everybody looking at me, I just knelt down right there right beside of him. He said, now repeat after me. I repeated every word the man said. I said that I was a sinner. I said that I believe Jesus died for my sins. I said I, I believe that you'll save me and I ask you now to come into my heart and to save me. I mean, I repeated everything the man said. Amen. But you know who was speaking to me? A man. A man was speaking to me. Amen. But I remember when man that day that Jesus spoke to my heart. Never a man spake to this man and that to me. Well, glory to the Lamb of God. Don't you see, whenever Jesus speaks to you, you'll know it. Amen. You see, Whenever he spoke to my heart, that felt like my heart was going to beat out of my chest. I don't know how anybody else was. This is my testimony. But this is mine, what, I, what the Lord done for me. 
it was not a happy occasion in my life. He said, what do you mean it wasn't a happy occasion? I mean, whenever God began to deal with me, He began to show me who I really was. I mean, I was a sinner. I was lost and undone. Amen. And Satan coming at me, telling me, Dewey, you need to be saved, but just not right now. I mean, the devil was putting thoughts in my mind. I would go to church and he'd say, look around at everybody. Why, if you go up there and pray, everybody's going to see you. I mean, the devil was working on me and God was speaking to my heart. Never a man spake like that man. Whenever he spoke to my heart, he called me. Preacher was a preaching, but I heard Jesus. You see, today, friend, is He speaking to your heart right now? He's saying, come. He forgives sin. Amen. He'll forgive you. Come and get a song. This morning, this morning, whenever I came, I came up, I was hanging on to the bench with all that I had every night of that revival. I was hanging on to that bench and I would just hold my head down. And, and the devil uh, tell me to just wait, just wait, just wait. He'd been telling me that uh, for three or four nights. You know what the devil is? He's a liar and the father of it. Uh, amen. Uh, he was telling me I needed to be saved, but just not right now. And God was saying you need to be saved now. Amen. Now is the accepted time. Now is when you need to come. I remember I was hanging on to that bench. I was sitting over here on this side about where Dorothy and Barbara are sitting. Right over here, my dad was standing next to the aisle on the end of the bench. I was standing right beside of him. I was standing there holding it. The Lord speaking to my heart. I said, Lord, I want to be saved. I don't want to die lost. I don't want to go to hell. Lord, help me. And I remember I looked up at my dad right like this. And I done that. And I let go of that bench. Only thing that I remember, my dad was just standing right, right back like this. And he looked down there at me. I know he did. Whenever I took that step, I remember my dad stepped back like this. My daddy was a man. He's a big man. He's about 6'4", about 280. He couldn't help his son. Oh, but there was one speaking to my heart who's greater than they are. I can Next thing I remember, I don't remember walking the aisle, but the next thing I remember, amen, I was crying out to God. And I said, oh, God, save me. God, save me. Amen. And I remember whenever, amen, my sins were felt like the weight of the world was lifted off of me. God put His Spirit in me. I was saved, born again, still Amen. I will always, forever, eternally be saved. Never a man spake like this man that forgives sins. I'm going to tell this if you don't mind standing for just a minute. Jesus speaks in different ways. In one place, we read where he didn't say anything. He just wrote on the ground. They come to Jesus. They brought a woman taking the act of adultery. They said, we have a law. She was caught in the very act. She was guilty. Couldn't deny it. The Bible said they brought her up here and set her right in the midst. Right in front of everybody. Now you stop and think about that. How would you like it, Bobby, if I knew something on you and I said, okay, Bobby, stand right here. And I just started walking around. Now Bobby's done this and Bobby's done that. That's what they done to her. 
I can just see her maybe holding her head down probably weeping I'm guilty and they were saying we've got a law by the law of Moses she should die she should be stoned to death looked over at Jesus but what do you say he was about to speak the Bible said he was sitting down the Bible said that he stooped he began to ride in the ground It ain't always words whenever he speaks. But he reveals whenever he speaks. Amen. And he began to ride in the ground. They continued on with their accusations. Finally, Jesus stood up and he said, Ye that are without sin, cast the first stone. Then he knelt down, began to ride in the dirt again. And the Bible says, they being convicted of their own sin. I don't know what he was writing, but whatever it was, they knew what it was. It it was convicting them. Never a man spake like this man. They all left her. And he turned and looked at her and he said, Woman, where are those thine accusers? She said, Lord, I have none. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I'm glad that he didn't come to condemn, but to save. Oh, friend, never a man spake like this man. Stand. If you're here and you need to pray, come. Go ahead. If you could see what I once was if you could go with me back to where I started from then I know that you would see a miracle of love that took me in its sweet embrace and made me what I am today and all sinners say by grace I'm just a sinner saved by grace statement here many times but God will only do you good I mean whenever he does a work in your life it will be perfect it will be good and man he wants to help you today and all you've got to do is come come call upon him while he may be found seek him amen today oh today friend he loves you we're going to ask them to sing another verse. And right now, would you step out? Would you come? Come while the Spirit of God is drawing, while He's calling. How could I boast of anything that I have ever done? How could I dare to claim as mine Victories my God has won. Where would I be 